Hi, this video is going to be a quick demonstration of how good design can really uh, improve the resource consumption of a database. Uh, it started out with me just messing around with the database today as I had some time and uh, I wanted to see how much I can compress the size of a volume of data that I have. Uh, basically just trying to see which way or what methods would work to reduce the size of data that I have for a particular table and this is actually relevant for a couple of scenarios that we encounter on a day-to-day -day basis uh, if you might notice recently I've been doing a lot of uh, uh, videos on Power BI and because these technologies store a lot of their information inside of the memory it's always a very good idea to have as little footprint of uh, data within the memory as possible so I've already done the step so I'm just gonna go ahead and demonstrate the uh, the uh, impact of it rather than actually sit and do each step so uh, it started out with this particular table here called report data sets so I'll just quickly show you a demonstration uh, I'll just show you the top hundred rows maybe from it and uh, that should give you an idea of the kind of data that I'm working with right and uh, once we have that then we can talk about the details in terms of how I reduce the size of this database and what were the steps involved in the process as you'll see uh, we've got uh, this is standard data that I use for a lot of my demonstrations so it's about airline information we've got the date and time etc we've got the airline information we got things like the origin airport and the destination airport etc as well as things like the time it took to um, to take off as well as taxi and any delays associated with the flight of the aircraft so it's a fairly big table it's got close to about maybe a uh, hundred columns in it actually maybe about 85 to 90 columns I think and uh, this table in itself is already having some data types that we typically encounter so you'll see I've got big int for numbers and then I've got like varchar 3 as well as varchar 2 um, Varchar 100 for the city name and the state name etc. So it's not like as if this is the worst possible data type that we could use for this particular database uh, table. Having said that if you look over here I'm just gonna go ahead and uh, show you the size occupied by this table at the moment. Sorry. And uh, what you can see here is that this table at the moment occupies close to about one gigabyte and that's kind of expected for uh, this volume of data because I think we've got close to about uh, 2 million rows or a little less than that maybe but uh, I'm not really sure so I'll just go ahead and quickly verify that for you right here so the idea being that we've got a very wide table this is the kind of table I typically see when I uh, look at Power BI implementations where they just join all the tables make one massive table and then do all their reporting off of that I'm personally not a fan of it because there's a lot of redundancy and duplicacy in that and uh, it goes against normalization and tabular design so uh, for that reason I don't really uh, recommend that approach but uh, I'll demonstrate why as we go further through this video you'll see we've got close to about 2 million rows over here so we've got a table that's 1 gigabyte in size that has 2 million rows in it and the very first thing I did is I went ahead and fine-tune the data types for this report data set and that's what you'll see here in this table called report data set type so you'll see that again we just have all the same columns that we had before except that now I've chosen more appropriate data types so I've used small int or date or uh, char1 or char2 depending on what I thought would be the best fit for the data so again you'll see I've got all the columns that we had before except for the fact that the data types have been reduced and almost immediately we see a massive saving in terms of space so I'm just going to show you exactly how much that data came down from one gigabyte down to uh, as you can see here 400 megabytes and that's 400 MB as of right now so just by using the right data types we've brought it down uh, by about 50 percent or a little more than 50 percent but this is not where the story ends because obviously anybody who does the database design knows that the next step is normalization and as a result what I've done is I've broken up the table as you can see here into a table called normalization and uh, I'm just gonna show you what we did here 
So instantly you can see that the date part of the uh, table has been removed. It's put in a separate table called calendar over here. So that basically gives us uh, just the date column on which we do the join and identify the calendar details. So I'll just do select star from calendar here uh, just to show you the, uh, the data there. So we join these two. This is going to be a dimension and obviously the normalization table that I have here is going to be my fact. You'll also see that I removed some carrier information as well as the airline, uh, the airport information. So you'll see that I don't have the country, city, state uh, for origin airports or destination airports as well. And by doing this, I've kind of cut down on the size of the database table. So at this point, if I just do SP space used, I uh, keep making the same mistake again and again. And uh, if I just use normalization over here, you will see that from 400 megabytes, it's now down to about 200 MB. So you'll see that we've cut down the uh, the size of it by uh, to about one fifth of what it was originally. So this in itself gives us an idea about how much space good design can save us. And uh, at this moment, uh, I'd like to pause and explain that I've basically all I've done till this point is use the right data types and do very basic normalization. And when I say very basic, uh, for the most part, I've not even gone to the third normal form. I've really just stuck to the first and the second normal form. And in that itself, you can see that we've saved around 800 megabytes. Now, the really fun stuff happens at this point because, as you know, once we do normalization, then we really have to adopt some of the technologies that is available. And one of the stuff that we will find inside SQL Server or the older versions of SQL Server is uh, compression. And this is the table and role, uh, the row level and page level compression that's available inside SQL Server. So that's what this table is about. You'll see that this table, again, basically is just a copy of the normalization table, but again, compressed to. Uh, Uh, page level compression so you'll see again the data is exactly the same we've got all the same columns as before uh, you'll see that there is uh, two columns called uh, departure block and depart arrival block which is basically uh, let me just see if I can show that to you real quick report data set I'll just do the top hundred again over here and that's basically these two columns that I have here so these again because of the hyphen in them they're treated as varchar 9 and uh, they're just standard time slots as you can see a lot of duplicates over there so by doing this I've gone ahead and really normalized all the unnecessary data types such that the normalization table here really just has integer or small int data types and the occasional char as you can see so once we do normal row level and page level compression what we'll see is that what started out as uh, one gigabyte is now uh, actually uh, let me just go ahead and do this really quick and there we go again and now we've brought it down to one tenth of its original size so you not exactly one tenth but you get the idea it's about 140 MB so what started out as one gigabyte is now 140 MB and as you can see this is a very good level of compression most guys would be happy at this point but again we still have one more feature that we could use and uh, just to give you an idea about what happened here is after I did this whole process I needed to go ahead and put a clustered index on the table just so that I could sort the data in the data page and achieve 100% uh, fill factor because there was a massive amount of uh, uh, fragmentation because I was updating the IDs for all the normalized uh, foreign keys. So at this point you'll see that one gigabyte is now down to about 140 kilobytes but the thing that we're really missing here is we could also go ahead and in addition to all this add a clustered column store index on the normalization table and by doing that we would achieve a much higher level of compression just because of the uh, the vertipack compression that's uh, the algorithm that is used to compress the data within the uh, the lob data pages and that's where you're gonna see something really amazing as far as the level of compression that you can achieve nowadays with SQL Server so I'm just gonna go ahead and do SP space used I got it right this time 
and there we go so at this point you'll see that what we have now is 600 um, sorry 64 megabytes of space used by the normalization table so as you can see uh, what we've done here is we've started out with the table that's about one gigabyte in size and after we're done with everything that we wanted to do we brought it down to really the bare bones essentials as far as memory footprint is concerned and that is uh, 64 uh, 65 MB plus we'd have uh, about um, 1 MB for these three tables which is the airport the calendar and the carriers and time block as well and I guess that's basically what I wanted to show how good design can reduce memory footprint and improve the resource consumption as far as reporting or even basic T-SQL querying is concerned and this is something that a lot of people miss out mostly because they're not comfortable with normalization or they don't understand the features that are available to them but this demonstration that I did right now hardly took me about 25 to 30 minutes to get it done and that kind of gives you an idea about how simple it is to really do these things if you just want to go ahead and get started with uh, saving space and naturally what this means for me is now I can load maybe 20 times uh, 15 to 20 times the uh, the data to achieve the same volume so uh, a simple example would be that if I just take the uh, original size here and what started out as uh, as you can see here one gigabyte is actually sixteen times compressed and that's a big deal as far as databases are concerned especially when we are dealing with very transactional databases uh, high performance systems and the simple fact that we actually don't delete data anymore so these kind of small things that you could do to improve your database design could actually make a, a simple database a server last maybe two or three times longer than it normally would because it wouldn't need to worry about churning that much volume of data in the RAM or in the CPU or even just the storage requirements of uh, that volume of data. Uh, just to give you a further idea, if you extrapolate this, basically what it means is that we could store uh, one terabyte. I'm just going to add the zeros here. Maybe that might give. So if this is one gigabyte, I'm just going to add three zeros to it, and that basically makes it one terabyte. So I'm just going to go ahead and do that right here. And if I just add the three zeros here, what it basically means is again this is not perfect but we could technically store a one terabyte table inside of 64 gigabytes and obviously this is an exaggeration it will not be uh, as good as this necessarily because the volume of data will increase and there might not be as many duplicates as we go further but it's still gonna be pretty close as far as uh, my personal experience with these things have been so it's not gonna be off by more than maybe five to ten percent but that's the kind of compression you can achieve and that matters so I hope you found this video not necessarily entertaining but at least you found out that it is possible and that's the kind of intention with this video and I hope you've enjoyed it and thank you for watching